Hey how you doing you all, hope you all doing great, so in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto owns bakery, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe, and don't forget support and show some love to author of this fanfic, link tree in description. Let's get in the video. Everybody loves cookies. Don't they, though? Well, I certainly hope they do, because if they don't, then I open this bloody bakery for nothing. Hmm. Maybe I should have tried my hand at a cafe instead. A hey, semantics. In my experience, I've found that almost anyone can be plied with sweets. From the deadliest hunter to the merest minion. Even the most vicious of villains tend to favor sweets in one form or another. Don't let word of mouth fool you. I once saw a girl who barely came up to my chest murder a man because he looked at her ice cream. Didn't even touch the damn thing. Just looked at it. True story, I shit you not. Everybody has a sweet tooth for something. Trust me. Cakes. Chocolate. Even cookies. I prefer the latter. Now, I know what you must be thinking, Naruto, you're an idiot. After everything you've said and done, after everything you've been through, after all the battles I've fought, why the hell would you open a bakery in the middle of Vale? Did you hit your head when you fell out of that portal? Well. Therein lies a story. Do you, a bakery might seem like something of an odd choice. Especially for a shinobi. For me. It seemed a simple one. When you've saved the world half a dozen times over and stranded yourself in a foreign dimension, there really isn't anywhere else left to go. You've done all you can do, and at some point just don't feel like fighting anymore. It's not that you can't or won't, but that you simply choose not to. So you try to find a hobby, something that makes you happy. Something that makes others happy, too. Let somebody carry on the good fight. Let someone else be the hero. Let something happen. My home was at peace when I left it behind, probably still is. Even if it isn't, it's none of my concern. They probably don't even remember need me, and it's not like I can get back to them. I've had decades to reconcile myself to that fact. When I first landed here all those years ago when I first met Ozpin I had nothing. I didn't want to be a huntsman, wasn't interested in his crusade, but I helped him anyway. For a time. Gave him a lifetime or two to set up his precious schools. It paid off. Some might argue that I still have nothing to show for it. I disagree. I've spent most of my savings on cooking lessons and the rest building this place from the bottom up. They're mistakes, to be sure. Loads of them. Took me a hundred years to get my craft right. Burned down a building or two. Or three. Or four. But I learned, because I had the time. Yuzumaki jeans have their perks, I suppose. Or maybe it has something to do with I don't look at day over twenty. Eternal youth has its perks, I suppose. Never asked for it, but it lets me live life at my own pace. Oz still asks me about it now and again. Why baking, you ask? You laugh, if I tell you, it's more a whim than anything else. Dad once said food brings people together. Figured I may as well give it a try. Didn't want to run a bar. Couldn't handle coffee. Running a cafe looked like it would be too erratic, though I'm open to the idea. But cakes. Chocolate. Cookies. Sweets. Those I can handle. Hmm. Come to think of it, I might make it a cafe after all. I'm a quick study. I've had ages to perfect my craft. As for the name. That was a bit of an accident. Didn't even mean to use it at first, but it kinda stuck. Baker's dozen. Who needs staff? Shadow clones for life. Alright. Time for the first big day. Bring on the customers. How hard can this be? Just flip the all sign here to open and wait for someone hey. Dot zero. 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 I smell c-o-o-k-i-e-s. Naruto was many things, ancient, eternal, and quite possibly immortal. Some called him prankster. Others, a hero. Still more named him as villain and betrayer. He had stared down madmen and gods in that order, and somehow triumphed over them all. Not through with her any brilliant strategy, but through sheer bloody tenacity. If it weren't for an accident years after said victory, he wouldn't have found himself in the world of Remnant at all. In the years hence, he'd fraught abominations that would make even Kagaya shiver. Grappled with Grimm the size of buildings. He'd once seen the face of evil herself and bid her a good day. Needless to say, it took a lot to phase him these days. A small scarlet streak that just shot through his door. That tiny red terror currently perched on his stool as if she owned the damn thing. This little bright-eyed creature gazing up at the plate of cookies in his hand with abject hunger in her eyes. Naruto Uzumaki feared her, and for the life of him he couldn't quite say why. It wasn't her size or stature that did him in, on the contrary, the huntress looked almost harmless compared to someone of his stature. By contrast to his bright colors, the girl wore all red and black, her hood hiding most of her face. Save her exuberant smile and burning eyes. No, he corrected himself as said hood tumbled back to reveal a young face framed by dark hair silver eyes. Now where had he seen those before? And why did they remind him of? Nah. Probably a coincidence. You're open, right? 
She chattered at him amicably, all but bouncing in her seat. The sign said you were open. He supposed it was her seat now. Didn't look like she'd be leaving until she got what she wanted. Judging by her earlier declaration, he had a good inkling of what she was after. Fair enough. He'd wanted a customer, and here he had one. He just hadn't expected one to arrive so. Quickly. Aye, he grunted. We're open. The girl all but squeaked. Why why? Arms still coated with flour brushed themselves against a faded black apron as she met his gaze, leaving a faint plume to stain his blue jeans and orange turtleneck beneath. The girl coughed quietly, wriggling in place like an eager kitten faced with a ball of yarn. She didn't bat an eyelash when a clone stepped up to serve her, that soon changed when she recognized the resemblance and he the compact weapon concealed against her back. Little bundle of energy, this one. She must be new. No, definitely new. She had that green look about her. Not untested, just. New. They made huntresses younger and younger these days. And again, hadn't the entrance exams been a few weeks back? Hadn't it? Do. You look just like each other. The newcomer cooed, glancing between them. Are you twins? Naruto and his Depelginger exchanged a knowing yet bemused look. Something like that. One of them chimed. Something caught the girl's eye, and she flitted across the room in a whirl of red to inspect whatever it was. Well. That was quite the semblance. At least, he assumed it was one. She certainly didn't lack for any energy early in the morning. Almost made a man jealous, he was hundreds of years old, and even he couldn't be out and about without a generous helping of coffee. Kids these days. How did she even do it? Sure enough, he soon lost track of her again as she blurred to the other side of the storefront. What's that? That would be the oven. The faintest smile twitched at his lips. And this. Her face squished against a nearby display. Warming rack. Naruto indulged her. Can I bring my team here? Don't see why not, long as they pay. Came the reply. Any more questions? Am I your first customer? She darted away again. Yup. He couldn't quite fight the smile. S-W-E-E-T. It was like watching an eager kitten chosen the food industry for reasons just such as this one, in part because he wanted to be near the people. See them. Hear them. Talk to them. His fighting days might be done, but that didn't mean he intended to shut himself away from the world. If anything, he welcomed this spontaneity. He just hadn't expected to encounter someone quite so. Chatty on opening day. Still, if this was how his days would be, he might reconsider the cafe bit. He'd have to do something about the name of course. Unless he decided to keep it. Just had that nice ring, you know. But for now. His gaze continued to track the young huntress as she flitted about the room like a hummingbird on crack. Can I get you something? He finally offered her a small indulgent smile. You look hungry. Quick as a flash she was back on the stool, legs kicking rose petals in her wake. Yup. Ruby Rose chirruped happily at him. A plate of cookies, P-L-E-A-S-E. -E. In a deft motion he slid a tray in her direction. Her eyes all but lit up. Here you go. He smiled. One plate. It's on the house, kiddo. Really? She wriggled. I can pay. You don't have to. Naruto waved her down. Nah, go ahead. Enjoy it. He had no way of knowing what he'd unleashed. How could he? Hunters were an odd bunch. He'd unwittingly opened the floodgates. How very little he knew. You? I'll have your head. The heavy thud interrupted them. Both of you, sit down and finish your desert. This isn't even mine. Came the redeed snarl. As if I would eat something a mere human made. Blue eyes gleamed back at him and to his dismay, he did just that. Sit. Down. Adam. Or die where you stand. Whichever you prefer. Pick. Emma. Not drunk. Why are there three gangs? Alright, who gave Ruby that drink? Three heads shook rapidly. Naruto didn't look up from his glass. The Shni did it. Yang tackled her in an instant. You? I did no such thing. And Rubly only laughed. W-H-E. If Naruto's first day had been goodness and purity personified. By the gods, you actually did it, you soft-hearted fool. Thought then his fifth was fear incarnate. Not that she embodied terror per se, on the contrary, given what he knew of her, Raven Branwen could easily be counted amongst the most cowardly warriors in all of Remnant. She was also one of the strongest. And something of an old friend. Those three attributes made for a rather volatile combination. He knew it was her the moment someone opened a scarlet portal in the middle of his bakery and strutted right through, the act of which had everyone else fleeing like a flock of startled nevermore. And didn't that just make his mouth twitch? Thought those were paying customers. A bundle of stolen. Lean smacked him in the face. Her arms spread wide, armor clanking softly. Happy now MMPH. The sugar cookie sailed across the room like a shuriken to plug her mouth before she could continue. Raven blinked. Looked down. Frowned. Scowled. 
Naruto awaited the inevitable explosion, the flurry of sword strikes or worse, but it never came. Instead as he looked on she raised one hand to her mouth, pushed the rest of the confectionery between her teeth and devoured it. He didn't fail to notice that the other had fallen to the hilt of her sword and had yet to move. Oh, no. No, no, no. He wasn't having any of her petulant little fits today. Not in his house. Red eyes roved about his humble establishment, assessing its worth before she finally stepped forward. Weapons on the rack. He stabbed a finger to the wall, stopping her cold. Or out you go. Raven stomped a booted foot, eyes alight. You know I can't kill you. Even now. Doesn't matter. Rack. Weapons. Now. She almost looked cute. Fine. For the merest moments as she complied, Naruto actually entertained the idea of kicking her out solely for spite's sake, just to deny the black at her oh so precious fix and see what would happen. Would she sulk or fly into a fit of rage? No, that wouldn't work. When Raven wanted something, she wanted something. She'd try to take it from you too, if you weren't strong enough. Say what you would about her past, but Crow's sister held a flair for the dramatic. She always had, even in their youth. He wasn't sure why he expected anything less from her now. She certainly walked around like she owned the damn place. He even turned the damn sign around, flipping it to closed. If she scuffed his floor with that stool, he'd be taking it out of her ass. What's the occasion? He already knew the answer by her face as she laid her arms on the counter. And I check in on an old friend. Her voice was a silken purr, one he didn't trust for a minute. Not a second. You can, Naruto allowed as a small, silent Rasengan began to form in the hand hidden behind his back, but it's been years. Has it? She tilted her head and her eyes burned again. All the more reason, then. Think of it as a way to celebrate the coming spring. If that was Raven's way of telling him she was the new spring maiden, she wasn't being subtle about it. Then again, he'd known the moment she'd walked it. You couldn't hide a power like that, not from him. He could see it in her soul, a bright red flame burning bright red in her chest. It had to be the spring, couldn't be anyone else. The fall maiden was even now wandering the world under an assumed name, her destination unbeknownst to all save a scarce few. All the while, their enemies assumed thanks to a clever decoy that she was still somewhere in Beacon. Last his spies had reported, Amber was safe in Vacuo. Exactly where she should be. Atlas still had the winder maiden, now an old woman, under lock and key. Vacuo? No. Just now. Nobody much cared about that wasteland these days, because no one knew they held the Summer Maiden, strongest and fiercest of the bunch. Raven would have been a fool to pick a fight with that monster. And if that thing was mentoring Amber. Not a chance in hell. One Maiden alone was bothersome enough. Two Maidens. Together. Fully realized. Nope. Just nope. You'd need an army to even have a sliver of a chance at those two. Raven was many things, but she wasn't suicidal. And she only had her tribe, those miscreants were no army which left Spring, and an ugly question. You killed that girl, didn't you? He asked. The one who ran away from Haven. I didn't want to. Raven's lips formed a thin line of displeasure as she glowered at him. But she was weak. I had no choice. Naruto exhaled and let the Rasengan wither away in his palm. Sometimes he wondered what he'd ever seen in this woman. He'd always had a thing for dark-haired girls. She'd been better once. Better than this. Before all her fear turned her world bitter and cold. He wanted to grab her by the shoulders and shake her, it made him blow out an angry breath, still keenly aware of those rueful red eyes following his every move. Blasted woman, driving away his customers. Not a single soul had dared to enter, since she turned the sign around. Something told him she wouldn't take kindly to any such attempt on his part. Still, he had to try. There's always a choice, Raven. Hooded red eyes regarded him coldly. You're one to talk. Naruto felt a spark of something in that instant, an emotion he hadn't experienced in quite some time. Anger. He tamped it down quickly before it could light a flame in his heart. Breathe. He was done letting her goad his hand into action. If she'd come here picking a fight, she wouldn't get it. Still, those words had stung just now. Why did I think this was a good idea again? He grumbled. Because you're a soft-hearted fool. She smirked. Ugh. Raven, I will end you. Promises, promises. Well. Something ugly reared its head in his heart and he snapped at her. At least I didn't run away. Why you? Raven flinched, actually flinched, but her eyes blazed even hotter. He could see their flames now. Like it or not, I know you. When she tried to stand up Naruto chose that moment to act, he seized her shoulders and forced her back into her seat. You wouldn't come all this way just to brag about being a maiden. She twisted away and he angled his head to follow her. You want something. I don't know what it is, but it must be pretty big for you to pop in on an old friend. Now tell me what before I toss you out on your ass. He didn't expect her to hang her head. Just like that. Had she given up so easily? 
Her hair shielded those beautiful scarlet slits, hiding them from view. That ache. The words were so soft he almost missed them. Naruto leaned closer. I didn't catch that. I came for cake, damn you. Her head snapped back up with such force that her hair actually smacked Naruto in the face and caused him to jerk back, not with shock, but a laugh. It was her expression that sold it, her cheeks burned a hot pink as she wriggled in place, saffron red eyes gone damp from equal part shame embarrassment. He started laughing, going from dead silence to full-throated raucous laughter in an instant, so suddenly that her face turned scarlet. He'd never forget the sight of her squirming in her seat, watching her squeezed her knees together, it was such a girlish expression that he nearly whipped out his scroll to take a picture. Bah, he had security cameras for that. But this moment. Priceless. Utterly beyond compare. Naruto swore he would never forget it. Cake. He guffawed, wiping a mirthful tear from his eye. You came all this way for one of my cakes. You absolute bastard. That set Raven right off, because she turned into a bird and launched herself at him. It was something she'd only ever done when she was absolutely furious with him, looking back, he wasn't sure why she did it at all. Wouldn't it have been better to use her newfound powers or simply throw a punch? What was she thinking? Regardless, it was his victory. To her credit, Raven managed to bloody his face with her beak before he got a hold of her. From there. Her attack was doomed to fail. Gotcha. Strong fingers clamped down gently but firmly on her smaller form, holding her fast. She squawked and squirmed, to no avail, his iron grip kept her from changing back. Nipping at his hands did her no good, for every inch of flesh she took, he simply healed. In the end she was left with no other recourse but to glare at him. Yikes. If looks could kill, he'd be a pile of ashes right now. Hard to believe something so small could be this vicious. You done? He asked. Raven arched her neck, ruffled her feathers, and shot a nasty caw at him. Now that's just rude. The immortal wrinkled his nose. Are you going to behave? Or do I have to put you in a cage for the rest of the afternoon? The bird's head bobbed in defeat. The girl. The moment he let go, Raven reverted instantly, her face still pink, eyes teary from embarrassment. Gods, I hate you. Yeah, yeah, love you too. He sighed ruefully, turning his back on her. You want dark chocolate cake right? I made a cake like that the other day. I'll see if there's any left over. He didn't see her stiffen. She actually favored him with a smile when he returned. It reminded him of happier times. Perhaps she was smiling for the cake. Naruto laid it before her and looked away cleaning a glass as Raven dug into her afternoon desert with singular determination. He even deigned to pour her a glass of milk. Who would have someone so intense would enjoy chocolate? So? He began, for lack of anything better to say, how's life treating you these days? Well enough. She replied evasively around bites. I still can't believe you did something like this. Couldn't be a hunter forever, you know. Killing Grimm's all well and good, but sometimes you need to kick back and enjoy the simpler things in life. A thought prodded him and he ran with it, leaning forward. Say, well you're here you should pay Yang a visit. He frowned when she asked for another slice, pulling out a fresh platter for the hungry huntress to devour. She's a huntress now, you know. Come to think of it, she'll probably be coming by any day. No. Raven's response was immediate and expected. Naruto blew out another angry breath. Raven. I said no. She's your daughter. Not mine. Naruto nearly dropped his two trays. Again with that nonsense. Raven. Hmm. How did he put this delicately? She reminded him of Sasuke, in a sense. Granted, she was far less breedy and didn't have a clan to avenge, nor did she want to kill her brother, but the resemblance was still there. She had a tendency to sulk when called out on her bullshit, to bottle up her emotions and seethe silently for months until she exploded. She liked to think herself clever. Manipulative. Whereas he had made peace with his old friend long ago, his relationship with Raven and didn't he hesitate to call it that was contentious at the best of times. They'd butted heads before in the past. They'd had something once upon a time, once, back when he had been a different man. A lifetime ago, he might have believed her. She doesn't look a thing like me. Now he batted her words aside with practiced ease born of experience. Nice try. She's Ty's little girl, through and through, and that's the way she'll stay. If he even allowed himself to consider otherwise. Nope. Not going there. She has your eyes and temper. And your strength. The bandit leader's mouth curled in a wry smile, pleased to find herself on firm ground once more. Enough to tear a giant nevermore in half. She didn't get those genes from mere Tai, Naruto. She's strong. Urk. Hmm. Nevermore, you say. He refused to rise to the bait. Been watching her, have you? The FFT. What? Raven choked on her cake. And no. I never said that. Naruto's grin resembled that of a shark. Point for him. You didn't have to. 
When he went to pour her another glass and fetch her a plate of chocolate cookies, she immediately slapped down more burgoglin in payment. He wouldn't have charged her, but if she was going to monopolize his resources and time, he had no compunctions about fleecing her for every bit of cash she had on her person. She'd only steal more when she got back to Mistrell. And he'd let her, too. You couldn't lock up a maiden. She'd just break out. If there was one thing that Raven respected one thing in this world it was strength, only three people in this world held enough of that to make her obey. Would've, should've, could've. He shrugged, at a loss. I wouldn't make a very good father, trust me. Then trust that I wouldn't be a good mother. Her red eyes bored into him. You could try. Spirits, why was she making this so damned hard? It's a little too late for that, don't you think? She sighed. Last at all. They were both adults. Why were they dancing around this like a bunch of hormonal teenagers? What they'd had was long gone. Dead and parried. A chance encounter in the night. It should be. They were two different people now, leading different lives. Yet when he looked at her, Naruto just couldn't bring himself to let go of it. She looked. Tired. Not old, just hollow. As if someone had reached deep inside her and ripped out all the hope in her heart. It hurt to see her like this. He wanted to help her, to bring back that woman he'd fallen in love with, if only for a night. Is it too late for Yang? The words tumbled out before he could think. Or too late for us. His guest went absolutely still in her seat, eyes growing wide. Shit. He swore inwardly. Why the hell did I say that? I Naruto. What the devil did you just say? I miss you, you know. He offered mildly. Again. Bad tongue. Shut. Up. Raven's mouth snapped shut with a tortured click, and she ground her teeth in audible frustration. Without warning her hand snapped across the counter to seize his right hand in hers. For a fleeting instant warm fingertips curled around his own. Her eyes met his and something sparked. Her eyes flitted down to his lips, and the grasp on his hand turned to searing iron, as though her palm were superheated from within. He could have torn his grasp from hers and she knew it, she waited too, waiting for him to pull away. When he didn't retreat, Raven do what she knew he would. She leaped over the counter and grabbed him by the face, smashing her lips against his. Naruto inhaled sharply in shock as much as surprise when her hands threaded in his hair. That was a mistake. Breathing sent her scent searing through his nose all over again, she smelled of earth and smoke, and just so damn familiar that he couldn't control himself. Her arms formed a loose noose around the back of his neck, and his hand seized her waist to drag her closer, feeling the fullness of her hips press against his own. She shrugged free of her armor and breast smashed up against his chest, sending his pulse hammering furiously in his ears. She wasn't wearing anything underneath that shirt. He'd missed this. He'd missed her, snark and all. She was trying to talk to him, trying to say something, but he wouldn't let her get the first word in. When they finally broke for air, he offered the only thing he could. I really did miss you. It was the right thing to say. Because Raven absolutely growled. Then her mouth was pure avarice against his own, greedy and hungry and tasting faintly of chocolate as her lips tangled with his. She bit his lip and he bit back, kissing the nape of her neck as she arched her body back into his. He fraught back as well of course, digging his heels when she tried to shove him down and tear at him, though this in turn led to a drunken sort of dance through the dining hall. A tiny moan fled from her as they grappled with one another, smashing up against a cupboard. Her fingers tangled in the hem of his shirt as one of his hands gently cupped her breasts, furtively trying to find purchase in rough fabric. Then, all at once, the spring maiden jerked away. Hum away with me. She stepped back, cheeks flushed as she tugged on his sleeve, perhaps the most vulnerable he'd seen in a long time. Your strength is wasted here. You could. We could. MHM. Naruto kissed her again, and her words turned to a keening whine before she mastered herself again. Stop. Stop that, damn it. But her snarl lacked its earlier rancor as she returned his ministrations tenfold. I can't think when you do that. She faltered, words failing her. But what? With a supreme effort, Naruto managed to master himself and tug her back before she could escape. Take over the world. I already told you, that's not my shtick. My fighting days are done. If it's about Salem. Can you stop her? Came the whisper. I don't know. He admitted freely, watching his old friend wilt. Even if I could, I don't think I want to. No, listen. When she tried to retreat he hauled her back, hand coming up under her chin. There has to be another way. If we run around killing people without knowing their side of the story, doesn't that make us just as bad as the monsters we're fighting? She's killed millions. Blue eyes gleamed red. I've done worse. Much worse. Neither denied that, neither had been the best person in their youth. You say that, but have you even seen her? Raven challenged, eyes narrow. Naruto hesitated. In the end, he chose to tell the truth. I have. Once. She looks. Lost. Lost, that's your excuse, Raven exploded. Damn you. Why must you save everyone? 
Why does it always work? Exasperated, she threw her arms into the air. Even now you could flatten anyone who stood against you. I know you could find a way to beat her if you wanted. Yet you choose to while away your days doing. This. It's called living, Raven. He countered. Try it sometime. You don't have to go. Stay. Just for now. What? And work in your bakery. Well away the rest of my life in mediocrity. Naruto felt laughter bubble up in him again. Would it be so bad? Raven flinched as if he dumped a bucket of water on her. But there was a smile there. A hint of. Something. I'll consider it. Not now. Later. Maybe. He knew she was truly out of sorts, if only because she didn't use a portal. Instead she flounced away from him and out the door as only an frazzled maiden could. Which is to say she blasted it right off its hinges and took most of the wall with it in her frantic haste to escape. She nearly forgot her weapon and had to double back in a frantic blur. Her gaze flicked towards her armor, but she gave it up, not trusting herself to return and be able to escape again. It took everything she had just to storm forward. Naruto dutifully trotted up to the ruined frame and propped it back up again, but not before he flipped the sign back to open. In doing so, he saw Raven risk a glance over her shoulder, only to realize she'd been caught. He laughed and blew a faux kiss at her, watching her pale visage light up. This time, she didn't so much step into her portal as she did dive. Something told him he hadn't seen the last of her. It was enough. The faintest of smiles tugged at his face. See you around, Ray. Only then did he truly notice the damage she'd done. Who's going to clean this up? What happens if I break these so-called rules of yours, then? Cardin growled. You know good Frontus loving piece of. A muffled thud hit the floor a heartbeat later, as his ruined body toppled backward with splat. Dorito blinked, paused, rubbed a bit of blood off the glass he'd been cleaning. Oh no, I seem to have murdered another criminal. Nora. Bury the body in the back. His assistant beamed. Dorito nodded. Bury the body in the back. Who am I kidding? Let's not get overzealous here, old man. Roman lowered the cane. You've always been a huge piece of shit. If I could kill you, I would. Sadly, the universe seems to frown upon that. The blonde brow rose in mild amusement. Missed you too, Roman. What'll it be? The criminal threw himself into a chair. Look, unless you're serving something strong, I don't want hay. Neo nimbly vaulted over the counter to Naruto's side. For his part, the blonde actually deigned to spare her a glance. Howdy, squirt. Missed you too. How are things? He laughed when bounced up to kiss his cheek. That good, huh? You want the usual? She only laughed silently at. It was just something about Naruto and the number 9. Perhaps it had something to do with Karama, though he'd not spoken to his friend in ages. Perhaps it was simply good luck. Or bad luck. Who could say? Even across worlds and time, the number almost seemed to haunt him, dogging his every step. He oftentimes found himself falling back on it without thinking. Nine cups of coffee even an immortal needed a good pick-me-up in the morning. A nine-mile run before he opened up shop for the day. Nine clones to tend to daily tasks. Nine dead grim, just to keep his skills sharp. Nine days in business. Nine flyers sent out to hire potential employees. In time he'd begun to see something of a pattern, for it was on the ninth day that Raven returned. By then Baker's Dozen had made something of a tidy profit even after repairs so much so that Naruto had expanded his initial business venture and begun serving drinks alongside sweets. Drinks with alcohol in them. A bakery with booze. Just the thought of it made him smile. If that didn't make him a walking contradiction, he didn't know what would. With the power of chakra, a host of other abilities, and an unlimited army of clones at his beck and call. Well. Anything was possible when you put your mind to it. Ah, but he digressed. Thankfully his old flame didn't demolish the door when a portal when she stormed the castle this time. She'd better not. He was king of this castle. Besides, he'd only just fixed the door. Of course, that was not to say Raven's return was a quite one, either. Far from it, when the door crashed open with a cataclysmic crunch, he knew precisely who to expect. Afternoon sunlight spilled through the cracks, but no one batted an eyelash. Naruto had to fight down a smile at the sight of it. His clientele had long since grown accustomed to such a racket hunters were involved. Raven was no exception, ex-huntress or not. This time, our attempt to scare everyone out only earned her a few dark looks and the odd middle finger, nothing more. Raven absolutely twitched. Seriously? Nothing. God she was adorable when she pouted. Naruto wished he could see that expression more often. Something told him he'd be seeing a lot more soon. Because that was one of his flyers clutched in her right hand, he knew the worn brand of paper and recognized the sigil of crossed golden foxes over a plate. She caught him looking and her pale face turned seven stunning shades of scarlet. Naruto didn't taunt her. Not yet. She might bolt if he did. Instead he waited for her to commit before he made his move. 
Sure enough, she stalked forward and slapped said flyer down on the counter with enough force to crack the wood. When do I start? Start what? Naruto smiled like a shark, savoring the moment. I'm afraid you lost me somewhere in translation there, old friend. Raven leaned back, refusing to give him the satisfaction he sought. She wanted to slap him. She almost did. They'd been partners once, she knew exactly what kind of game her old friend was playing and would have none of it. Blast him. He'd always been a snarky little bastard in the past, but now he'd upped his game. She told herself she hadn't come back for him and almost believed the lie. Almost. She told herself it was safer here with him than the tribe. At least for a little while. She'd seen the way he fraud in the beginning, and he'd only gotten stronger since. She could see in the way he carried himself, even as he pulled a fresh tray of cookies from the oven, there was surety of purpose there that belied his power. Naruto could have torn down Beacon around Osbin's head if he wanted to. Thankfully, he didn't. Salem would be in for a nasty surprise if she sent one of her agents to Vale, assuming she ever learned the true identity of the Spring Maiden. Vernal would be cross with her, but Vernal didn't need to understand. She was here for a reason. It had nothing to do with Naruto's sunny smile. He didn't make her feel warm. Wanted. Loved. She certainly didn't want him to bend her over the counter and. Ahem. Naruto coughed and for the first time in nearly a decade, Raven actually felt heat rise in her cheeks as his words tugged her thoughts from a pleasant place. Oh gods, it was like being a teenager all over again. She wasn't some blushing maiden. Actually, she was. A maiden of course. Never a blushing one. She refused to admit it. Blushing was weak. And she would not be cowed. I am here, she forced the words out through gritted teeth to take you up on your offer. I don't recall making an offer. She slapped the flyer in his face. The job, you oaf. Really? Naruto tilted his head nearly horizontal to peek over the paper. Got any experience? Some, yes. She relished his brief frown. Summer had gang pressed her into working at a diner once to pay off a debt. Once. Never again. How someone so small could be so ruthless was beyond her, but that was a hell she wasn't keen to revisit. Too many customers thought they could have their way with a girl in a skirt. She'd cut off their hands and never looked back. Surely working in a bakery would be a step up from that. How hard could it be? It wasn't as if he had any other takers. She was the only one who'd shown interest, therefore, he had to hire her. He couldn't keep using those clones of his forever. It freaked people out. H-E-L-L-O. So when a girl with a grenade launcher of all things strapped to her back chose to peruse his establishment, Raven didn't think much of her. Or her outfit. Too much pink and white. And the hair, ugh. Not that she looked hideous or anything mind you, it was just the colors that riled Raven so. Far too bright for her liking, and so she resolved to ignore her. Hey, mister. Until said girl elbowed her out of the way. You make pancakes here. Raven paused, reassessing this cheeky little teenager with a wary eye. She'd felt that elbow. Perhaps there was some strength to the girl at all. Not that it mattered. As if sensing that thought, Naruto smirked. We do indeed, missy. Interested. Her grin turned feral. When can I start? Ah. The cheek of this girl. As if he'd simply hire her out of the blue. You must be Nora Valkyrie. Naruto flicked her a quick smile. Sure, we're hiring part-timers. Got any experience? Nora's smile proved sunny. And somewhat concerning. Nope. Rennie said I should learn some life skills, though. Cooking counts, right. Ah why did Raven have the feeling this decision was going to end horribly for her? Naruto was no fool. Surely he wouldn't hire this slip of a girl just like that. He wasn't like Tai. He was no trusting fool. He would doubtlessly tell this Nora just what he thought of her inexperience and show her the door. You can start tomorrow, if you like. Naruto said. We open at 7. You'll be waiting tables, at first. That all right. Wah. Sweet. Nora chirruped happily and skipped back the way she'd come. See you then, boss. Raven whipped back around and sputtered incredibly. Are you? Why? Harden. Quick as a flash she reached over the counter and grabbed him by the collar. She doesn't have any experience. She said so herself. And you do? He blinked foe innocently. Yes. She released him with a hiss, heedless of the chuckle it earned. I just told you. Then you're hired. Naruto didn't bat an eyelash, but his shit-eating grin made her want to shriek. His hand dipped behind the counter and flung a bundle of gold red dark blue at her. Here's your uniform. He chuckled as she caught it. Shift starts in five minutes. Hope you know how to clean dishes, because that's what you'll be doing tonight. You told that girl to come back tomorrow. Raven howled, jabbing him with a finger. And waiting tables. Yes. His grin threatened to split his face. Yes, I did. Now, shoo. Into the back with you. She reared to her feet and kissed him, drawing a few whistles. Rotten bastard. Would you have it any other way? She bit him. 
I'm only joking, of course. Naruto hummed and leaned into her, laughing when they parted. Seriously, you? Washing dishes. Do I look like I have a death wish? I was beginning to think you did. Raven clicked her tongue as she gave him another shove. Damn it. She had missed him. Insufferable snark and all. On a whim, she grabbed him by the sleeve, fingers fisting against the rumpled blue fabric. You really know how to make a girl feel welcome. He beamed and pressed his forehead against her forehead. Missed you too. This time when his mouth claimed hers it was softer, not tentative Naruto could never be that but almost gentle by comparison. Something in her melted and she pulled him closer. Idiot. She'd fallen in love with an idiot like this no. She was still in love with this idiot. Ah, get a room, you too. One of the customers crowed in a body shout. There are decent folk about. Raven nearly skewered him on the spot and it was only Naruto's hand on her arm that stopped her from doing something foolish. Oh gods, she thought it was Crow for a minute. Almost sounded like him, too. She'd never live it down if it was. And hadn't she thought of that when she returned to Vale? No. She hadn't. She hadn't come back for her brother. But Ozpin was in Vale. Yang was here. I was here. Gah. There was a can of worms she had no desire to open ever again. One fight. One argument. One slip shattered things between her and her old paramour. Who was to say she and Naruto wouldn't squabble and go their separate ways again? They'd only reunited now years after the fact. Who was to say they wouldn't separate once more? They eyed here came the panic. He must have sensed her fear, because he drew her aside. In the back. We can talk there. Good. Your clones can keep them busy. Raven flounced off, tugging him away with her. Have them make a pound cake or something. Why, is that a command alright alright, alright. He laughed as her open palm cracked against the back of his head. Ha. That tickled. You heard her, boys. Raven hissed softly at her smarting fingers as she pulled him into what served as a break room, all the while keenly aware of the pain in her hand. Even now she could feel the bones creak ominously. Tickled. She'd nearly broken her hand on his skull just now. Well, it confirmed her suspicions. He'd gotten stronger. When they were younger, she'd at least been able to injure him a little. Now. He hadn't batted an eyelash. Damn it, he didn't even have aura, and she had all the power of a fully realized spring maiden in her body now. Would she ever bridge the gap? Well, welcome home. Naruto followed her into the back as she anticipated, but rather than approach when she let go of his hand, he seemed content to wait. Raven flicked a glance for her surroundings, she wasn't impressed. In hindsight it couldn't really be called a break room, the space was little more than a large alcove meant for storage with a table and a chair stuffed shoved into a corner. A fan creaked lazily overhead, providing a faint breeze that did jack all against the heat of the ovens. She'd have to do something about that. Naruto was many things, but an artist wasn't one of them. He likely didn't feel the heat, but Raven did, and it worsened her mood. Her mind word. Maybe knock down a few folds, expand the space, get some proper ventilation back here. That would be better. And he was still staring at her, trying to figure out what to say. Turn around, you perv. She swiped at him lazily. Naruto did as she bid but made it clear he wouldn't be leaving. Instead he settled against door frame and crossed his arms. So that's how it was. He wanted to listen to her squirm at the very least. Bah. Challenge it was, then. Raven shed her clothes quickly but kept her undergarments, relishing the way he stiffened as the fabric rustled and fell to the floor. He might not be able to see her, but he could certainly hear her. She'd drag every reaction out of him. Served the bastard right. She almost considered approaching him, but thought better of it. She was still cross with him for his earlier antics. So she considered the uniform instead. It was. Surprisingly tasteful, all things considered. She'd expected a maid's uniform or worse Naruto could be a vicious prankster when pressed, but the uniform looked like a simple civilian dress wrapped in a white apron slightly faded by time. Where did he get this? A thrift shop. Oh, its colors matched those he wore to be sure, shades of dark navy blue embossed with hints of cold alongside long sleeves, but it was still nowhere near the horror she'd been dreading. There was even a slit near the thigh to allow her free range of movement, and the skirt ended well above her ankles, eliminating any possibility of tripping. Raven still didn't like it. Do I have to wear this? Yup. He chirped. Why? Something wrong? She growled. Naruto, this is a dress. He sniffed. It's a uniform. Oh, no. They were not doing this again. Even if she couldn't see his face, she could hear the impish smile in his voice, see his shoulders shaking and barely repressed mirth. A wise woman would have seated the fight and taken the opportunity to strike later. Not Raven Branwen. She was too stubborn to concede a fight, to ignore a slight, no matter how small it might be. Least of all when it came from an old flame. Dress. Uniform. Dress. She spat. His smile didn't waver. Uniform. Arg. 
In the end, the mighty Raven Branwen was forced to concede the battle and yank the uniform dress. Over her head. This wasn't over. He would rue this day. Rue. No one messed with her. Not even him. She'd find a way to get him back for this if it was the last thing she did. It's going to be alright, you know. Is it, now? Raven scoffed the sudden statement as she pulled on the uniform, sweeping it over her head. I don't think it will be. I don't know why I came back. Yes, you do. He didn't look at her, but she saw his shoulders slump in relief. And for the record, I'm glad you did. Her face burned as she pulled her hair free from the neck hole. Shut up. Uh, she was surprised. Blasted thing actually fit. Not too snug, but not too loose, either. Didn't even feel like a uniform. Just. Clothes. She pulled the apron on, scoffing slightly at the pair of golden foxes carefully stitched into the fabric. It was odd, seeing them. Naruto never gave a fig about stitching or sewing before, yet this was done with the work of a master. More than that. Something in the fabric sang to her, leaving her skin cool in spite of the head and long fabric. It didn't take Raven long to make the connection. Did you weave chakra into this? Got it in one. He slapped his hands. It's no armor, but it'll hold up in a fight. Aw, sarcasm dripped from her voice. Didn't know you cared that much about little Almy. A beat of companionable silence passed between them, neither willing to break it. Raven shuffled awkwardly. Naruto blew out a sigh. I don't work with Ozpin anymore, if that's still bothering you. He'd likely said that to break said the silence, but it relieved her all the same. We don't see eye to eye. My fighting days are done. Liar. They clearly weren't, not if he could take a slap from a maiden and laugh it off. He'd either kept up his training or at the very least, left his skills sharp. Even if he was done with Ozpin and she believed he was there was still the possibility of him becoming an enemy somewhere, or so her paranoia said. She wasn't sure which was worse, the idea of fighting Naruto. Or loving him again. This was her fault. Perhaps she should have stayed away. Should she? It wasn't too late to create one of her portal and leap through her it. But her heart twitched traitorously at the thought, keening like a forgotten child at the idea of leaving again. And yet you've gotten stronger. So she took the bullhead by the wings instead. Don't think I haven't noticed. The blue eye peeked over his shoulder, and she caught the hint of a grin. Didn't say I got soft. She accepted the challenge for what it was. You can turn around now. Naruto did so. Whistled. Huh. You look good. Remarkably, he didn't snark any further than that. Oh he looked he wanted to, but the sight of her seemed to steal his breath away. Raven preened. Of course she looked good. Her figure was a source of pride as much as it was her strength. Becoming the spring maiden had only further enhanced that beauty. Humming, she presented her back to him. She supposed that sealed her. There were precisely three people she would willingly turn her back on in this world and still feel safe around. One of them was dead. The other was her brother. Naruto was the third. Fix my hair. It was not a request. Warm breath seared the back of her neck. What we talking about? A braid. She shook her head and he did the opposite, carefully binding it back into a rough ponytail with a scrunchie she provided. What happened to Vernal? Left her with the tribe. Raven hummed as his fingers worked her scalp. And watch those hands, mister. The truth, albeit a half one. So long as her apprentice remained in Mistral, she had an instant portal out of this hellhole. If something happened, if her enemies came for her. She needed an escape route. So long as the girl didn't get it into her fool head to follow her, all would be well. Where will you be staying? With you, of course. A blood-red eye regarded him over her shoulder as he worked. You wanted me here, I'm here. She turned to face him as he released her ebony tress and planted a hand on her hip, shifting forward ever so slightly. I hope you're happy with yourself, you'll not be getting rid of me that easily. Naruto quirked a brow. I still snore, you know. And I hog the covers, if you recall. She shot right back, unable to keep the smile from her face as she stepped to him. That a problem. Damn him. Damn him for making her feel young again. This wasn't going to last. Happiness never did. It was only temporary. She'd do something to piss him off, or he'd set her off with one of his pranks. They'd grow tired of one another. This couldn't last. Because if it did, it made her the fool. And that. That made her feel like shit. She'd been the one to run when things got tough. He hadn't. Why was he being so bloody patient with her? Why was he trying? He considered her words for a moment and shrugged. Nope. Raven's eyes blazed with scarlet flames as she dragged his mouth down to hers. Naruto inhaled sharply, if there was one thing she took pleasure in, it was her ability to get a reaction out of him. She always did. And this. She delighted in pushing him away from her, hearing him growl in frustration. He reached for her hips, but she ducked away, leaving his hands clutching at empty air. He could have pursued her. Chazzed her down, tackled her, nailed her to the floor and made sweet, sweet love to her. 
Gods knew she wouldn't be able to escape from him if he took it into his head to actually exert himself. That he didn't do so now suggested a level of control that hadn't been there before. Dorito sighed. Wow, Ray. Even I'm not that cruel. You'll get more later. If you're good. Cruel, cruel woman. You couldn't force Raven Branwen to do something. Anything for that matter. If you did, she would just rebel. You could nudge her, suggest things, but any choice she made had to be done of her own volition. Oh, she was rude and flighty, and damn did she look good in that dress, but he believed in her all the same. Was this petty of him? Perhaps it was. Raven had a strong personality, for all her cowardice, she could be incredibly stubborn when she wanted to be. So could he. It was part of the reason they'd gotten together all those years ago, and one of the reasons he was still so keen on her now. Opposites attract, or so the saying went. Bolox. So what if she'd been unfaithful? So what if she told half-truths? It didn't change who she was at her core. When he looked at her, he still saw the woman he'd fallen in love with all those years ago. That hadn't changed. Of course he still wanted to bend her over and... Hello. An unfamiliar voice called, causing them both to jump. Is the manager in? They parted with more of a growl than an actual sigh. Guess that's our cue. Raven followed him back out front. And absolutely froze. It was then that things went pear-shaped. Dot zero. 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 Come on, come on. You gotta see this place. Yang allowed herself to drag down the sidewalk as only a big sister could. Which is to say she bore Ruby's singular enthusiasm with a chagrined grin. The rest of their team? Slightly less so. Say what you would about Ruby's love of cookies, but when her little sisses was determined. She was determined. So much so as to drag her new team out her the first chance she got. Alright, alright. Slow down. She laughed. What's got you in such a twist, Rubes? It's only cookies. Yang. Cookies are love. Her sibling rounded on her with a gasp. Cookies are life. Cookies will rot your teeth. Weiss warned, tapping her forehead. Lake laughed softly. Ruby gasped. Weiss. That's heresy. Reeeeeite, forgot who I was talking to for a second there. Yang rolled her lilac eyes. All told, Baker's dozen didn't look that impressive. Just a humble little bakery. Nothing special, at least from the outside. Ruby insisted they made the best cookies, and she'd been dying to drag them here for nearly a week now. Weiss was. Well, less than keen on the idea, but she'd eventually rolled over, as she always did. Blake. Blake barely spoke a word. Diddy Cat had claws, but she hadn't shown them since initiation. She'd have to do something about that. She had her ways. Hello. Ruby called, placing one head to the side of her mouth as they swept inside. Is the manager in? We've come for C-O-O-K-I-E-S. Don't have to say it like that, Rubes. Silver eyes rounded on her. Cookies are no laughing matter, Yang. Hey. An unfamiliar laugh answered her sister, and Ruby was off like a shot. If ain't little Red Riding Hood. The next thing that struck Yang as odd were the clones. At least, she assumed they were clones, because there was no way in hell nine identical men in matching outfits could be related. One of them walked right up to them and greeted Ruby with a plateful of cookies, pausing to ruffle her hair as the girl happily accepted her treat. Wait, what was this, a semblance of some sort how wrong she was. Or something. Shouldn't be. Those suckers were solid. Seriously. H-E-L-L-O there was just no way they could be clones, even Blake's vanished with a good whack, and they couldn't do anything like this. She didn't see her partner perk up behind her, bow twitching just so. Are you real? It was the most she'd said all day, and Yang took immediate notice. Oh, we're real. The one with the platter flicked her forehead, drawing a glower from the girl. Each one of us. I take it you have a similar semblance. Suddenly those amber eyes seemed just a little bit sharper than Yang remembered. Huh. He managed to catch her interest. She wasn't sure if that was a good thing, but an indignant snort captured her attention before she could think to rescue her. Ruby was happily savoring her cookies without paying for them. And Blake was even now engaging one of the blondes in a vigorous discussion. Which meant. This is where you wanted to take us. Weiss turned up her nose. This place is a dump. Oh, look. Another of the clones sidled up to her. A shnee. You wouldn't happen to be related to someone named Winter, would you? Weiss blinked, the hot air rushing right out of her sails. That's my sister, yes. How do you know her? Yang watched the Depelgingers face narrow in mild annoyance. I'd rather not say. If it ain't obvious, the boss is busy. One of the other milling copies jerked a thumb to the back for her. But he'll be out any second now. And you are. Yang. She snapped off a snarky salute and shook the man's hand when he offered it. Whoa. Quite a grip you've got there. Startled blue eyes blinked back at her, then narrowed thrice as fast. Wait. Did you just say Yang? Um. Yeah. The clone's expression turned strained. Of course you did. 
Well, the boss isn't gonna like this. Don't ignore me. Why stomped her foot behind them? Hey. Listen. I'm talking to you. Oh dear, I thought I just felt a B-R-E-Z. -E. The heiress turned incandescent. Why you? Yang expected many things to follow, chaos at the very least. Ruby hadn't been wrong, this place was interesting, if a bit homely. Even with four of the clones having peeled off to engage each of them, five more were still busying themselves with other customers. Almost made her jealous. She liked her semblance and all, but this one was the epitome of multitasking. Unless they were all brothers or something. Which would be weird. Cool, but still weird. As such, she wasn't paying much attention when a bell chimed from the back, heralding a new arrival. The last thing she expected to see was her mother. Least of all in an apron. In a bakery. Mom. Raven was entirely of the same mind, because she couldn't do this. Nope. She hadn't signed up for this. She wanted to bolt, but Naruto's iron grip on her shoulder prevented her escape. He made a point not to look at her despite the angry whine she gave. Bastard. That utter bastard. Had he planned this? No, he looked just as startled to see Yang as she was. Heh. At least she could take some small spiteful satisfaction in his stupefied gaze right now. She hadn't been lying, she was certain Yang was his daughter. Not matter what time I think. And said daughter was currently gaping at her like a fish. Ruby, what the hell? I'm sorry. Her sister wailed. She wasn't here last time. I didn't see her. Should I mean, welcome. To his credit, Naruto whom she assumed to be the original recovered quickly, humming heedless of Yang's stricken expression. Well, I see you've made yourself at home. Anybody want cake? You can eat it too. Yang twitched at the obvious pun, but didn't rise to the bait. Not so, Raven, who was all too happy to throw Naruto under the bus. So she said the one thing that came to mind, the one thing she knew would distract her daughter. She took vindictive pleasure in it. So smiling, she pushed him forward. Say hello to your new father, Yang. Yang had only one word for her mother. Blah. Pound cake. Naruto offered. It was super effective. Yang fainted. Was this death? Yang almost wished it were, if only because death meant she would have have to open her eyes and face the day. Everything hurt. She was already fit to die from embarrassment before she remembered where she was, and once she did. Well. She desperately didn't want to open them. Her mouth was bone dry, her ears ringing, her entire body entirely too stiff, and her eyelids felt like someone had scrubbed them raw with sandpaper. From the inside. So, yeah. Eyes. Not opening. The day was meant to be a simple day out in Vale with her team, one free from any nasty surprises. Surprise, Yang. Raven's back. Surprise. She was right under your nose this entire time. Surprise. She shacked up with someone else. Surprise. She doesn't care one bit about you. Surprise surprise surprise. Rarg. No more surprises. By the brothers if she heard that word one more time she was going to punch. S-U-R-P-R-I-S-E. Icy water splashed across Yang's face, dousing her head and hair like with brisk dispatch. Ah. Her body betrayed her and she jerked upright, snarling like an angry beowulf. Cold cold cold. What the hell. Sorry about that. A familiar bass voice rumbled in her ringing ears as she flailed about in search for the culprit. You weren't moving. Ruby was starting to get worried. Yang blinked the water away, scrubbing at her face with the back of a hand. Dad. Well. Someone made a choked sound as her vision swam back into focus. That's not something I ever thought I'd hear. A familiar pair of baleful blue eyes nearly the same shade as her own gaze back at her. Nope. Definitely not dad. Ty wasn't that tall, and his hair wasn't quite that spiky. It was that baker from before, the one that Ruby seemed so keen on. What was his name again? Naruto. Ah, there's the one. A small, wistful smile greeted her gaze, one quickly wiped away by him as Yang tried to stand. An awkward heavy weight settled against her back, and all thoughts of familial ties were promptly forgotten. Did you get my hair wet? She absolutely hissed. Not surprise. Her fellow blonde gulped. Yang's eyes blazed red, and she threw a wild haymaker at his head. It landed neatly in an open palm as warm fingers closed around it. In a single seamless movement the supposed baker wrenched her arm down to the side and yanked her forward. She tried to headbutt him for it and immediately paid the price, burning stars burst behind her eyes as she bounded back. Gah. What was his skull made of, pure metal or something? She had aura for crying out loud, and that hurt her. Bloody monster. Now, now. Her host sighed as she toppled back to the floor. Let's not do anything you'd regret. Had it all been a dream? No, when she raised her head she glimpsed Raven she refused to call her mother seated by the bar, bottle in hand. One she was even now knocking back. As she looked on her mother damn it. Drained the bottle dry and tossed haphazardly it over her shoulder. 
One of Naruto's attending clones caught and disposed of it, while a second handed her another, once she went to work polishing off. But the vengeance. It certainly helped that the customers had left long ago. Perhaps that was Naruto's doing. Perhaps not. Who could say? The lack of an audience for this was. Nice, she supposed. And why was everything still blurry? Easy there, Naruto hummed suddenly, capturing her attention once more. You took quite the tumble when you fell. Cracked your head against a table and everything. Headbutting me just now made it worse. She tried to speak, but only gibberish emerged. See? Definitely a concussion. Naruto sighed. Hold still, you silly girl. Before Yang could think to protest, a tan hand pressed itself against the side of her head. Not a heartbeat later, it pulsed with a shroud of soothing green light, what was this, his semblance or something? No, no, that didn't make sense. Those clones were his semblance. She was sure of that much. Which meant this was something else. You couldn't have a second semblance. It just wasn't possible with Tinta Blue how was she doing? Yang sucked in a sharp breath through her teeth as a strange, heady sensation subsumed the back of her scalp. Hee that feels pretty good. She slurred, looking up at him blearily. Whatcha doing? Fixing your cracked skull. Came the sigh. Stop squirming. Bite wait. Raven croaked from her seat. You wanna go? Yang swung herself upright with a roar, only to find herself hauled back down once more. Lilac eyes blazed red, but the grip on her shoulder was ironclad, in no time at all, she found herself wrestled to floor and forced to be still yet again. This time, the hand didn't leave her shoulder, even as that glowing green palm alighted on her battered head once more. Naruto snorted. Ignore her. She's drunk. And about to be cut off. What? No. Never. Raven hissed and clutched the bottle to her bosom, it did interesting things to her chest. Mine. The second you let go of me, Yang began to twitch, I'm gonna talk to her. Hard. Repeatedly. With my fists. You could do that, that same hand combed through her hair, drying the soaked mane with some strange technique she didn't understand. Whatever it was felt even better than what he'd done to her head. Or you could sit her like a good girl and let me fix your hair. It's the least I can do. There was something about the way he'd said those words that made her want to question him, but she held her tongue. She could count the number of people she trusted with her golden locks on one hand. This man wasn't among them. Yet this felt comforting. Familiar, as he hummed at her. Almost as if. And now we have company. Yang. Ruby flitted to her side in a rush of petals, and the moment was lost to her. Don't worry about her, little red. The baker soothed. She'll be fine in a minute. The scythe master frowned. Don't call me that. You sound like Torchwick. Torchwick. A blonde brow rose. I knew a woman in Mistral by that name, once. Haven't heard it in ages. She a friend of yours. Raven went terribly still at the bar, fingers going white-knuckled around her bottle. With her back firmly planted to her, Yang had no way of noticing. Perhaps, had she bothered to look over her shoulder, she might have seen something interesting. Alas, she missed it and the moment was lost when she looked. Thug, no. Meanwhile. Ruby wrinkled her nose. Roman's a thug. And a creep. And a boy. Definitely a boy. Roman. Naruto's expression turned contemplative. How old would you say he was? Humor me. I dunno. Twenty-something. Ruby shrugged helplessly. Why? Do you know him? Hmm. His frown deepened. Not, not him, but that name. Yang was almost certain she'd missed something, or was missing something at the very least. Raven uttered the blackest of oaths, and Naruto's expression had turned positively radiant, as though he'd discovered a great and mighty secret, one he wasn't keen on sharing. Worse, her mother was chugging another bottle as if it were her last. As fascinating as this is, Yang growled. Can I have my hair back? Naruto reluctantly complied, and she wriggled free. How long was I out? She asked. Eh, about an hour. Her fellow blonde waved a hand dismissively. Long enough for Bertie here to start drinking. Guess some things run in the family. Yang didn't know the truth that this man was her blood, and so both failed to understand and meet the challenge. Run in the family? The hell did he mean by that? Oddly enough, her confusion seemed to bring a strange measure of relief to him as much as her silence. Before she could think to try and press the matter further, their host changed subjects. By the way, Ruby drew on your face. The little huntress recoiled as though she'd been struck. Lies. She cried. It was Blake. Nice try. Their sullen teammate appeared at her elbow. I was out in the yard. He has a yard. In the back, yes. Naruto sniffed. I can vouch for her. She was with one of my boys. Her semblance. Well, it's fascinating. I could say the same for yours. To her surprise, the girl granted him a small smile. You've given me a few ideas. Was it Yang's imagination, or did Blake's bow wiggle when she spoke? Did she still have a concussion? Ruby flailed, searching for someone to blame. 
Weiss glared her into silence before she could dare to speak. Raven laughed and flipped her off the moment she opened her mouth. And so it was that small silver eyes swung on the sole person remaining. Naruto's grin reminded Yang of a shark because it sealed her fate. My handwriting ain't that sloppy, kid. You promised you wouldn't tell. She pouted. Ruby. Back. She ducked Yang's arm. I've been had. See? Naruto was merciless in his calm. She admits it. Ruby howled condemnations and tried to tackle him, only to find herself held back by a single finger. Now that Yang thought to look as she scrubbed down her face, she was somewhat chuffed to find that the rest of her team even Weiss. Had gathered around to check on her. Even Blake. Who she realized was now sporting a black eye. Wait. When had she gotten that? Alright, kiddos. Naruto clapped his hands, now that we're all conscious, breaks over. Back to work with you. Ruby deflated. Oh, just when it was getting good. Considering you weren't getting anywhere with me. Wouldn't call that good. Lies. Naruto flung a pair of warm cookies at her like twin frisbee, and Ruby caught each with her teeth. What was that, trooper? He laughed at her. I was under the impression you enjoyed being paid to taste test my stock. Was I mistaken? No sir. The little huntress somehow managed to both swallow and salute all at once. Not all sir. Then be off with you. Sure enough, Ruby vanished behind the counter in a flurry of red petals. Apparently work consisted of just that, Ruby tasting sugary treats and ranked them accordingly, Blake being bustled outside by a clone, where she was promptly set upon by said de Pelginger, and forced to liberally apply her semblance in what could only loosely be called training, while Weiss. Well. She didn't really have words for what Weiss was doing. Because she wasn't doing anything. Just standing there, idly scuffing her foot against the floor. What about me? She asked softly. What about you, Shni? Naruto tilted his head and Weiss turned red. Here. He lobbed a clean rag at her. Those tables aren't going to clean themselves. Hey. Alright, maybe this guy wasn't so bad after all. With a long-suffering sigh, Yang allowed herself to hoist it upright to her feet. It still felt surreal, like a dream. Come to think of it, why had she passed out in the first place? She remembered walking in, seeing Raven and then she'd said. Said. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, gods. Meet your new father. Unfortunately, her brain chose that moment to recall that rather unpleasant remark. The implications made her face twitch. Earlier, you said. He's your new father, yes. Raven called out from the bar yet again, her smile just a shade of short of smug. Yang nearly conked out all over again. This. This was the woman she'd been trying to find for as long as she could remember, a woman only ever glimpsed in photographs. They really did look alike. Almost eerily so. Had she re she stole a glance at the woman who had given birth to her, for she could never call her mother, not after what she'd done, and Raven looked right back. Drink. She hefted the bottle. Ha. Huh. Maybe they were more alike than she thought. Gods, yes. Ordinarily she wouldn't drink like this. But here. Now. She drank the whole bloody bottle. She dreamed of this moment for so long, of what she would say, what she would do. Raven had always been a goal, someone to pursue, someone to chase. Someone to demand answers from. Now that she was here in the flesh, Yang felt her resolve waver. Right. She could do this. She needed to stay calm. Breathe. If she exploded into a fury, Raven would just run off again. Be calm, she willed herself as a clone set another bottle down between the two of them. Be still as a lake. Anger stole the choice from her. Why? She demanded, claiming the seat opposite her. She drank deeply. It burned as it went down. Raven frowned into her own bottle and mirrored her a moment later. Why? What? You'll have to be more specific than that. You left me. Those words ignited everything like dry kindling, waking the dragon within in a howling fury. You lied to me. You had me. And. And then you decided you didn't want me. It all tumbled out, the dam was breached, and there cold be no holding back the floodwaters. You threw me away. Why? Was I a mistake? Did you even? Of course you weren't a mistake. Yang nearly toppled backwards at the vehemence lurking behind Ho's words. And did I leave you alone? No. Raven shook her head, and somehow the dismissive gesture made her anger boil all them row. Yang, I left you with people who I knew would care for you. Folk who raised you far better than I ever could. And you have the nerve to say I didn't want you. Impudent pup. You never would have been born if I didn't want a child. She leaned forward, perhaps emboldened by her drink, or simply too angry to care what she thought. Or worse, I could have left with you. You would have been raised among the tribe. Would you like that, Yang? I think not. Yang recoiled at the thought. That's what I thought. Her mother scowled. What I did was a mercy. Think on that before you throw your misguided blame at me again. She leaned back, no doubt thinking herself victorious now that her point had been made. Tai and Crow did a good job of raising you. 
Summer was a better mother than I could ever be. Her words tore open an old wound. Summer died. Raven's face fell. Yes. She did. I'd heard about that. She paused, eyes alight as they fell upon Naruto. Hmm. Dear, are you able to? La 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 la. Ignore her. The blonde squawked, shouting over her surly scowl. Like I said, she's drunk. He added with a pointed look. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Dch. Just like that Yang's rage came boiling back, now at him. So you think you can just waltz back into my life, shack up with some random guy, and expect me to accept it, what about dad? What about him? Raven tilted her head. Yang didn't fail to notice where her eyes went, but she did fail to understand the implications. Naruto pointedly turned his back and returned his attention the ovens. Yang missed the byplay and mistook it for something else. When the next bottle came, Raven beat her to it and she swore. You absolute bye. Don't be crass. Raven flicked her forehead, drawing a hiss from the younger girl. I did not simply shack up with someone. I simply chose to rekindle the embers of an old flame. Her gaze regained some of its vitality for a fleeting moment, sharper than any blade. Recently, at that. If there's anyone to blame for that, it would be him. Naruto swore softly, but otherwise remained silent as Yang's hands crashed down on the table. How recently? She hissed. The day. Raven crossed her legs and twisted the knife, heedless of her daughter's agonized expression. If I knew you would be emotional about this, I wouldn't bother. For a moment she almost looked ready to bolt, only to sink back down into her seat as Naruto glowered at her. There are things you don't understand, Yang. She mistook her silence for acceptance and leaned forward again. I left that day because I needed to, just as there are things you need to know. Ozpin is. Slap. To her credit, Raven didn't dodge, though with her skill, it would have been well within her power to do so. Instead she took the right hook dead on the jaw like a champion. Her head snapped backward, but somehow, she remained sitting, even as her head jerked violently to the side. That same punch had blown a nurse's head off only a few days before. Raven Branwen barely batted an eyelash. She raised a hand, pried her daughter's fist away and sighed. Did you even come back for me at all? In the corner of her eye, Naruto flinched. Raven. Raven barely blinked. Thought that was a good punch. She granted, wiping a thin line of blood from her mouth. You've gotten strong, Yang. Don't. Yang jabbed at her nose with a finger. Don't you dare say my name like you're proud of me. Is it wrong for a mother to take pride in her child? She sounded almost sad. It hurt. You're not my mother. Naruto watched mother and daughter rage back and forth like that for what felt like an eternity, well, Yang did the raging. Raven just listened. In reality only a few minutes passed in Yang's tirade. Emboldened by booze, Raven Branwen weathered the storm that was her there. Daughter in surly silence, only offering the odd jab. All the while, Yang wind herself up more and more. Raven didn't get angry. She seethed, and he could see that even she was growing tired of this diatribe. Urk, this was awkward. Finally, he could bear it no more. Hey. Firecracker. He barked, startling them. Wanna spar outside? Yang shot right out of her seat with a snarl. Yes. Please. I need to punch something. Now. Preferably you. Never mind. He took back any and all thoughts on this girl who may or may not be his daughter. He was going to kick her ass. Wait. A sudden, awful thought occurred to him. In all this time, he hadn't seen hide nor hair of Ruby since she'd come out of the back room. Weiss hadn't budged an inch, she was pretending to clean a table nearby while she pointedly listened to them. Blake was outside and Ruby. Was nowhere to be seen. Ordinarily that wouldn't have much bothered him, Yang's sister could very much look after herself, and on the odd chance that she'd gone out surly patron tried something, she was more than capable of bolting away from them. Hey, kiddo. He called into the diner, where'd you go? Here. Came the cry as she stumbled into sight. Don worry. Em over here. Stumbled. When he turned, so did Raven, and by definition, Yang. In hindsight it couldn't be said who noticed first, only that someone did. It wasn't hard to miss the way the normally spry huntress tottered about, the glazed look in her eyes, or the bottle clutched in her right hand. A white bottle that had been on the counter only a few moments before, all but forgotten in the argument that followed. You know, she hiccuped, this is really good milk. Keen blue eyes narrowed on her intently. Ruby. Where did you get that bottle? Eh? She blinked. Once. Twice. Thrice. Somebody gave it to me. She kept right on blinking. Ruby. Yang all but howled, her emotions already at a fever pitch. Don't tell me you drank the entire thing. Pick. The young huntress weighed in her seat. I thought it was milk. Emma. Not drunk. Why are there three Yangs? Yang sucked in a short, strangled breath through her teeth. All right, who gave Ruby that drink? Three heads shook rapidly. Raven pointedly snatched the bottle behind her back. 
Naruto saw it of course, just as he saw the subtle shake of her head. Indeed, how could he not? By now he knew enough of Raven's tells to know when she is guilty, accidentally or not. One didn't get to where he was by being slow about this sort of thing. Of course he wasn't about to go accusing her, not when Yang already looked fit to snap at her dear mother for their earlier argument. And besides, where was the fun in that? Oh dear, Yang looked fit to spit right about now. I said who did it? The counter splintered under the brawler's grasp. Last chance before I start punching. Blake padded back inside, looking terribly cross. What's going on? I heard you shouting. Ruby? Drunk. Alcohol. No, if he told the truth now one of them would storm off, and their already strained relationship would be broken beyond repair. He could have blamed the Shni, but Yang would have butchered her for it. Really, there was only one answer for it. Even if it was stupid of him. Why did he have to be so bloody noble? With a long-suffering sigh, he laid his glass down and steeled himself. All right, you got me. I did it. Guilty as charged. Weiss whipped around, her pale eyes widening as she realized what was about to transpire. You? Raven looked absolutely stunned at his declaration. You didn't. Blake slapped a palm against her face. Here we go. Yang barreled into Naruto with a bloody roar. The tipsy ruby only giggled at his plight. Yang saw red. The mindless crimson haze obscured her vision, leaving her drowning in a great scarlet ocean, one that drowned out all sense and sanity. She couldn't focus, could barely even bring herself to breathe. She knew this of course, she'd always been more than a little hot-headed as a child. Even now, that hadn't changed. Her temper was something of a legend back in Patch, an unstoppable force that consistently carried her through every scuffle, fight, and schoolyard brawl before. And today. Today that temper had been pushed to its limits. No, beyond them. It had been such a nice day, too. Not anymore. Their fault. All their fault. Their fault. Raven gazed placidly back at her from where she sat at the bar, one leg swinging over the stool she sat upon, utterly unconcerned for her daughter's impending mental breakdown. Yang ignored her. She was the cause of this to be sure, but she wasn't the focus of her rage. Damn it, girl. She usually wasn't the sort to get riled up so easily. But now. Her blood burned. She gave no thought to their words as she stalked forward, much less the potential ramifications of starting a brawl in a bakery. No. Here, in this moment, two sentences summed up the entirety of her being. Yang angry. Yang smash. Because they're at the center of it all. All right. You got me. Naruto feigned a lazy smile and raised his hands as Yang seized him by his collar. Hey, easy there. He only laughed when she hoisted him off his feet. I didn't mean to get Ruby drunk, so... Yang's arm swung backward with an audible pop, and her fellow blonde made no move to evade the obviously telegraphed punch that followed. Perhaps that was sloppy of her. In her anger, she didn't even try to be subtle here, not at all. Even a civilian would have been able to doge a blow like this. She failed to see the obvious bait for what it was, didn't recognize it, didn't care. Her fist struck Naruto's nose with a devastating crack. His head snapped back and an off-red spray burst from his noise, then momentum ripped him from her grasp and sent him crashing into the kitchen. A dull crunch heralded the destruction of a wall as he tumbled through it and into the yard beyond. Yang leaped into the light after him with a roar that sounded more grim than human. Stop, you dolt. Weiss raced after her with a shout. This is idiotic. Can't you see he's baiting you? Raven uttered a jaw-popping yawn. I don't think she can hear you right now, Shni. The heiress absolutely hissed. You. Blood-red eyes narrowed as a pale finger stabbed between them. This is all your fault. Why didn't you say anything? Ilti is charged. The bandit drawled, flicking her hand away. As to why. Boredom, I suppose. Blake sputtered. You were bored. Pretty much. The older woman drained her bottle and tossed it over her shoulder with lackadaisical grace, leaving it to shatter against a wall. If you're concerned about him, don't be. He's playing. Dark hair swayed as she gave a rueful shake of her head. Naruto's always been like this. Sticking his nose where others wouldn't and taking the blame when he shouldn't. It's who he is. I gave up trying to change him ages ago. She craned her neck as a distant explosion rattled the room. Ooh, that sounded painful. He didn't do anything. Weiss protested. He let Yang hit him because Ruby drank your... Your... Your swill. To be fair, I didn't see her. Raven snorted. She's a quick little thing, just like Summer. Ruby's head popped up behind Weiss. Ooh oh, you knew mom. Of course I did. She was a lightweight, too. Really? For the first time since she'd met the woman, Raven actually smiled. It was a small, awkward thing, but a smile nevertheless. She even unbent enough to pat the girl's head, drawing a giggle from the inebriated huntress. Granted, the motion was stilted and she looked like she wanted to bolt, but the sentiment was still there. All that vanished as she looked to Weiss. You're Willow's brat, aren't you? You have her eyes. I what? 
said Shni blinked, startled by her remark. Truly. It wasn't a compliment, child. Raven clicked her tongue. Willow was a coward. Is she still married to Zok? Weiss faltered. Yes, but. Then she is a coward. Raven retorted. That man was and is a monster. I told her to leave, even offered to kill the man for her. She refused. That makes her weak. There was a bite to those words that hadn't been there before, a bitter edge that bit deeper than any blade. Was there some history there that she didn't know of? It made her angry. Her hand flew to the hilt of Mertnister and nearly yanked it free from her waist. No matter how much she might enjoy it, she knew this woman would block any attack on her part and return the favor thrice over. Whatever her past might be this woman was well beyond her. She knew that. Yet still her fingers twitched, aching for action. Go on. Raven leaned forward to meet her, eyes narrow. Do it. Hit me. Let's see if you have a spine. Don't talk to her like that. Remarkably, it was Blake who stepped up and came to her defense. Alas, that simply made her Raven's next target. Blake Belladonna, was it? A slow, predatory grin split the woman's mouth as she lounged against a bar, idly petting Ruby in her lap. It made for a rather confusing image. Hmm. Hmm. I know I've heard that name somewhere before. Ah. That's it. She snapped her fingers in realization. You're Collie's brat, aren't you? I didn't know she had a kid. Dipsy though she was, the bandit leader still regarded the wide-eyed girl with that cold piercing look of hers. Tell me, how's she doing? Her and Gira still a thing. Blake absolutely choked. You know my parents. I you. How? Call it a passing acquaintance from a misspent youth. The gleam in those blood-red eyes said otherwise. She never told you about me. Then again, it's quite the tale. Said eyes rose to her bow, leaving Blake to squirm under her gaze like a naughty kitten. Give her my regards when you see her, would you? I'm sure she'd love to know her daughter made it into Beacon. While wearing a bow. Blake wilted, all defiance bleeding out of her. Weiss nearly skewered her then and there. No good woman, fermenting conflict. Thankfully a third impact rattled the world and snapped her back to her senses before she could commit. Ruby, say something already. Stop them. Hmm. Okay why the little huntress made a face, kicked her legs against a bar, hopped off her seat, and staggered toward the gaping hole Yang had created. Let's go w-a-t-c-h. Not that. Blake. Help. Not a chance. Much to Weiss's dismay, the dark-haired girl made an X shape with her arms. I've seen him fight, I won't be getting involved in this madness. She didn't miss the fearful glance she cast at Raven. Bunch of nattering hens, the lot of you. Said Troublemaker pointedly ignored the glowers that went her way. I told you, he'll be fine. She still got up to follow Ruby, though. Well. That settled it, then. Yang had gone berserk, Ruby was too drunk to think straight, and Blake was clearly hiding something, and thus too afraid to take command. Which meant she had to take charge. A few days ago the notion would have been far more appealing. Now. She felt exhausted. Why was she always the voice of reason in this madness? It was like herding cats. She found both blondes in the yard beyond, one lay sprawled in the grass, the other looming over them. It was a picturesque area all things considered, not a space used for storage as one might suspect, but rather a simple enclosure with room to spare and sporting a fence on either side, the better to prevent intruders. There was even a small sapling in the backyard, suggesting it had been recently planted at that. Of course, the fence had did nothing to stop Yang. She'd blown right through. As they looked on, Naruto dragged himself upright, wiped a thin line of blood from his nose, and smiled. Hey, there. He saw them and snapped off a jaunty wave, uncaring of the berserk blonde at his back. Nice day we're having, isn't it? See? Raven hummed. He's fine. Yang tried to punch Naruto while he was distracted and earned a vicious mule kick to the ribs for her less than noble tactic. She crashed back into the fence with a grunt, bounded off the metal links, and flew at him again with a roar. He kicked her legs out without even looking at her, leaving her to tumble past him in a breathless heap. Hold still. She raged, thrashing her way to her feet. Why? I already gave you a few free hits, firecracker. Naruto beamed back at her, heedless of his broken nose. Hope you enjoyed him. Calloused fingers reached up and snapped it back into place with a grimace. Ouch, ouch. Damn it, that shit hurts. Jeez, you're just like your mother. The wild haymaker hurtled at his head and he nudged it aside with a slap of the wrist. Don't say that. She dove at him again and he caught her wrist, sweeping her aside with ease. Say what? He tilted his head innocently when she came at him again and leaped away. I don't understand. I'm nothing like Raven. Her stomp gave birth to a small crater beneath her boots. Don't call me Firecracker, either. You're not Uncle Crow. No. Naruto admittedly candidly, jamming both hands in his pockets as he swayed away from another punch. I'm not. If I were your uncle, I'd have taken you over my knee and tanned your hide by now. 
As for your her, well, he unbent enough to scratch a whisker cheek. You have her temper. Dang blinked. Burby squeaked. Whoa. Raven whistled. He had to say it. Something in those words ignited Yang's anger all over again, and she flew at him with a wild shriek. This time the baker met her head on, a gloved fist crashed against hers, and she felt something pop in her arm. Even as she cried out, he swung his arm backward and sent her tumbling into the dirt. A sudden and dizzying jolt shot up the base of her spine as her back collided with a wall. Instinctively she tensed and flung herself upright in a hurry, bracing for a counterattack. It never came. Rather than press his advantage, Raven's lover remained where he was. He was waiting for her, the bastard. Take this seriously, damn it. Why? To Yang's dismay, he merely blinked when she raged at him. I'm already holding back the lion's share of my strength here, if I were to take this seriously you'd be a pretty red smear on the ground. I don't think either of us want that, eh? The dagger of icy fear stabbed at her breast, only to melt with the fires of her anger. Don't look down on me. I'm not. Though his smile burned bright, the words were cold. Deer took weak to be a threat. In a fit of pique she slapped Ember Selica against the wall she braced herself upon. It discharged a dust round with explosive force, shooting bits of plaster and timber in every direction, and for the first time since she'd met him, the infuriating bastard stopped smiling. His right eye twitched. Hey. Don't go blowing holes in my shop. He frowned. I paid good money for that. Aw, oh, did I touch a nerve? Too bad. Was that petty of her? Very much so. Did she care? Not at all. She should have. She'd never been this angry before. She'd wanted to wipe that smug smile off his face and she had, but it wasn't enough. She wasn't satisfied with this. She wanted to kick his butt. She wanted to make him hurt. She wanted to win. You're being childish. His voice rose in a warning, and she shouted him down. Then take me seriously, you old fart. Naruto did not explode with rage as Yang had hoped, nor did he fly at her like some unlikely berserker. He simply frowned, tilted his head just a tad to the right, narrowed his eyes, and laughed. There wasn't anything particularly menacing about the noise itself, he didn't break into hysteric giggles, didn't throw his neck back and cackle like a madman, nor did his mirth hold a menacing air to it, as one might expect from a villain. He simply pressed a hand to his face and chuckled softly as he shook his head. Raven. He called over his shoulder. You still there? Of course. Yang stiffened as the bandit's voice echoed back to meet his inquiry, not a moment later her mother sauntered past her, hip swinging. In her mindless rage Yang took a foolish swipe at her and paid dearly for it, rather than draw her blade, her mother caught her fist, wrenched it over her shoulder, and slammed her into the dirt. All without missing a beat. Your girl's being a bit of a brat. He sighed at her. I'm going to be a little rough with her. That all right? Not at all. Her lips curled in a slight smile as she took a seat behind him. It's high time she learned some discipline. Agreed. She has no idea what it means to fight to the death. To put your life on the line. His lips twitched into a frown. It's time she learned. Edging his right foot forward, the whiskered warrior fell into a low stance, one arm swept behind his back as the other clenched into a cruel claw some inches before his face. Even from this distance Yang swore she heard his knuckles pop, one by one. The shadow flashed over his face and a muscle jumped in his jaw alongside, hell, his entire body seemed to tense for the merest of moments before falling slack again. His right arm swung up and tore his ruined coat away. The tattered remains of his shirt soon followed, leaving him bare-chested. Yang blinked. Blushed. Buckled backwards and covered her face. What the hell, old man. Don't strip. My eyes. It burns. Mwah. Cookies. Ruby drooled against Blake's shoulder as she snored softly. Raven rolled her eyes. Such a show-off. Did you have to do that? Weiss gasped, hands flying to her mouth. So many scars. Too many. She saw them before Yang could, indeed, it was impossible to miss them now that Naruto had removed his shirt. A veritable web of wounds scrawled across the older man's exposed torso, stemming from his shoulders and tapering off toward his waist. She had no doubt that his back was covered in similar injuries. Her suspicions were merely confirmed when he turned to face Raven. I'm not showing off. He drawled, but she barely heard the words. Just making a point. Oh, what the hell? Yang croaked. How are you even alive? That's the question, isn't it? Naruto laughed and spread his arms for further inspection as she gawked at his mangled back. Every injury you see here, every scar, is one I bear with pride. You keep asking me to take you seriously, but frankly. He shook his head. I can't. It's just not possible. I've fought monsters, grappled with grim, demolished white fang cells. Blake stiffened. Odd in this. He turned in place, folding his arms before his ruined chest. This little scuffle of ours is nothing compared to what I've been through. You're just a kid. His stern expression softened. I don't want to hurt you, you know. Weiss agreed. 
Despite her best efforts and she wasn't even the one fighting him. The heiress found herself shrinking back half a step. Had he sustained those injuries fighting Grimm? Or something else? She was leaning toward the ladder. No Grimm could have done that to his back. It looked like someone had taken a sword to his shoulders and tried to hack him to pieces. Or tried to gouge out a lung. By the look of it, they'd nearly succeeded. Just the thought of it made her nauseous. And to think, she was ashamed of her single scar. So. We'll start with five. Naruto spoke suddenly, causing her to start. And go from there. Eh? As Yang looked on in quiet consternation, her fellow blonde held his right hand out to her, fingers splayed. I'll use 5% of my strength in this fight. His words were blunt yet patronizing, that strange smile never once leaving his whiskered cheeks. No transformations. No summons. No jutsu. His arms spread wide as he dropped into a crouch, and there was just something in that simple gesture that set her sixth sense screaming. Just my bare fists. If you want to be taken seriously, then you'll have to make me. Survive the next 10 seconds and I'll ramp it up even further. Let's see what you've got. Now. Dodge. Lake realized the danger first and shouted a warning. Too little, too late. He absolutely blitzed her. There could be no other word for what followed. Against all odds Yang managed to get a gauntlet up in time, even then she felt her right arm shudder and Ember Selica buckle as his fist thundered home against her wrist. Blue eyes blazed down at her, dull and devoid of life, no, that wasn't it. They were cold, like twin icebergs looming over her, crushing her with the weight of her gaze. She swung at his face, and the ice melted as he flowed around it like so much water to ram a heel palm under her chin. Predictable. She nearly blacked out on the spot. Gah why you little. Yang spat blood and jabbed at his head, only to find her legs swept out from under her. Bereft of balance, she crashed to the ground in a heap. A fist came crashing down after her, and she flung herself to the side before it could hit, bits of stone and earth sprayed against her back as she stumbled upright. He chased her relentlessly, wrenching her arm down to ram his forehead against hers. Stars entire galaxies. Burst behind her eyelids from the impact. What was his head made of, pure metal or something? Sloppy. Came the rebuke as she teetered back. Your fighting style has no form. No substance. Yang swiped at him, and his knee found the back of her skull. Her aura crackled angrily and her vision swam again, this time with pain. They're quick to anger. She chambered a kick at his groin, and a whirling kick caught her ribs. She felt something crack. That's a weakness. Rise above it. Standing proved an effort in and of itself, but she still dragged herself upright only to caught by a spinning kick. Don't just charge in. Use your head. I know Tai taught you better than that. Don't you talk about my old man that way. I'm not. Naruto sighed. I'm trying to teach you something here, but it's clearly not working. Fine. He raised his fists in a boxing stance and began to bound from one foot to the other, taking jabs as he went. Come on then. His voice rose in a challenge. Hit me. This is what you want, right? Take all your anger out on me. You know you want to. She darted at him in a golden streak and this time, her fist brushed his chin. He stepped back and she swept his legs, but rather than fall, landed on his hands and crashed another kick into her chin. She caught it and swung him down into the ground, only for him to catch himself yet again and twist free to sweep her legs instead. Yang rode the blow, reared back and slugged him in the face for it. Still, the bastard refused to fall fall. Oh, he stumbled, looked surprised even, but she wasn't able to knock him on his arse as she'd intended. Still, those bright blue eyes widened in surprise before he clamped down on it. Was that pride, just now? It looked like he was proud of her. A strange, niggling sensation tickled at her, worming its way through her anger. There we go. He settled back into a stance. Again. Pulse bounding, heart hammering in her chest and high on adrenaline, Yang made a rookie mistake, one she hadn't made since her days at Signal. Had she been in her right mind, she would have realized it. Instead she ignited Ember Celica and swept forward with a wild haymaker. Naruto stepped back, allowed her to sweep past, overextended. His fingers formed a taut point, one that swept up and came down on her exposed limb thrice as fast. Yang tried to twist, tried to move in midair to do something about it, to protect herself, attack, defend, anything at all. Oh 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 oh. Her arm went numb, all sensation fleeing as the deadened limb drooped from her shoulder. The retaliation that followed was swift and merciless. Clenched knuckles barreled into her stomach to blast the breath from her lungs, taking most of her strength with it. Somewhere, very far away, she thought she heard Weiss cry out. Or was it Blake? She couldn't be sure. Her ears were too busy ringing. Yet the follow-through never came, leaving her to crash to her knees with a squeak. You can do better than this. Yang saw his boots halt just out of reach as she curled in on herself. You can be so much more. I know you can. Rather than attack, he reached down and pulled her to her feet. 
His forehead slammed against hers, not to attack, but to glare blazing blue daggers down at her. Where is that strength you showed earlier? Where is that determination, huh? How can you protect yourself like this? Would you be able to save Ruby if she's in danger? Could you even save yourself? Of course I could. Yang grit her teeth, refusing to fall back. What do you know? More than you. Her tormentor barked back, shouting her down as he towered over her. If I had a sword, I would have cut your arm off just now. And I'm holding back. His words slapped her again. What do you think an enemy will do to you if you're in a position like this? Forget the grim, you'll be fighting folks worse than me. They won't show mercy. They won't hold back. They'll cut you apart. The truth stung as much as her tears. Lilac eyes blazed red and golden hair set itself ablaze. Shut up. Her semblance had gotten her out of worse grapes than this, if anything she'd gotten used to tanking hits and dishing them back tenfold. She'd trained up her endurance for this very purpose after all, a single blow that would absolutely devastate anyone who got the better of her. Not was as good a time as any to use it. It was a good punch all things considered. Yang was proud of it. She was impossibly close and had taken a number of nasty hits by now. She could barely see stand after the last, yet she was sure she'd connect. Naruto hadn't even tried to step back. He was impossible to miss. She focused on his face as the power deep within her ignited all at once, and she rammed her knuckles at it, knowing he could take it. She never saw her punch land, but she felt the impact all the same, just as much as the scalding rush of steam that followed. The smoke cleared. Better. Naruto's smiling face was revealed to her, wholly unharmed as he held her fist before his face. But you've still got a long way to go. Yang toppled backward on her rear with a yelp as he released her. He'd caught it. Her best punch, all the power amplified and flung back in his face, and he'd stopped it with one hand. The realization should have made her even more angry, instead it humbled her. To know that even at her best, even with her semblance, she'd still been bested. By all rights she should be furious. She hadn't been beaten this badly in. Well. Forever. It was something of a wake-up call. She wasn't unbeatable. She wasn't invincible. Her anger had gotten the better of her, and she'd paid for it. Ah, but did he have to beat her so badly? Feel better? He asked. Got it out of your system. Thought I still want to punch you. She sulked, crossing both arms under her chest. I'm sure. Now hold still. Before she could protest her fellow blonde reached down and laid a hand on her deadened arm. Once again he hit the same pressure point, this time sensation came rushing back into the limb, bringing with it a thousand pins and needless that had her hissing and swearing. Ow, shit. She growled, rubbing at her arm. That really hurts, you know. It's going to. No hard feelings, eh? Naruto offered her that same hand, and something in Yang hesitated. Though it was a bitter pill to swallow, she'd learned something from this, no, she'd simply been reminded of the bitter truth, she wasn't the strongest out there. No matter how hard you trained, there was always someone better than you. Be a dad or Uncle Crow, or even Headmaster Osbin, or even this bloody baker. She'd always known it. This time, she took Naruto's hand and allowed herself to be hauled to her feet. Say, about what you said earlier. Oh, that. That was just an act. The whiskered warrior laughed and waved her off a little too quickly for her liking, almost as if he were hiding something. You were looking for an outlet, and I gave you one while pointing out the holes in your offense. That's all. Nothing personal. Sorry if I scared you, but I hoped it helped. Truthfully, it had. All her life, she'd been the sort to swing first and ask questions later. Her emotions always burned bright and then burned themselves right out. She'd already forgiven the blonde bastard she realized, the revelation of this ruse merely solidified that decision on her part. Unfortunately, a low crunch behind Yang drew a wince. She risked a glance over her shoulder and saw the damage she'd wrought. I can pay for that. The words tumbled out of her mouth. Well, I mean. Don't worry about it. He mussed her hair and laughed when she swiped at him again. Raven did the same thing. Lies. Huh. Yang wasn't sure how to feel about that. Should she be proud that she had something in common with her mother, or angry? She risked a glance back still wincing when she saw how much of the wall and fence she had demolished, only to find that her mother wouldn't meet her eyes. A lone finger rose in salute to greet her instead. That wasn't half bad. She said instead, desperate to change the subject. Next time you'll be the one on the ground, though. Sure, why not? There was a strange, almost bitter smile to his words. I'd be happy to knock you around again if that's what you're after. Do you need my scroll number? What, are you offering to be my personal trainer or something? She planted one hand on her hip as he drew a worn phone from his pocket. Careful now, your true colors are shining through. Perv. Let your mind out of the gutter. She swiped it from him. Dirty old man. He flicked her forehead in return. Cheeky little shit. Maybe she could tolerate this guy after all. It wasn't like he'd done any of this on purpose. Right. 
if she could wring a few tricks out of him, that might prove useful. At least she had an excuse to hide behind on that front to hide the shame of her defeat. After a moment's consideration, she added Blake's number, followed soon thereafter by that of Weiss and Ruby. Hey, if she had to suffer through this, so did they. But mom. Nope. Just nope. Looking at her hurt more than Yang cared to admit. It hurt a lot. There would be no forgiveness there. Not today. Not tomorrow. Perhaps not ever. It was too fresh, too painful. Just thinking of her hurt a scar she thought long since healed now lay open and bare to the world once again. But that was neither here nor there. There were more pressing matters to deal with. Matters that were bearing down on her with all the speed of a ballistic dust missile. Sucking in a sharp breath, she steadied herself and braced herself for Hurricane Weiss. She hit her like a missile. What were you thinking? I wasn't. Yang grinned back. That's the point, you told. Hey. He started. Yang turned to lay the blame at Naruto's feet, only to find that her fellow blonde had vanished into thin air. All that remained was a faint plume of smoke and what might have been a log at her feet. The hell was that? Her jaw clicked open in surprise as she frantically cast about for him, but he was nowhere to be seen. Quite suddenly, she found herself alone on that front. Traitor. She trusted him. Now she found herself alone with an angry schnee, alone and exhausted and utterly unable to run away. It was a good thing that Blake had her arms full with a sleeping ruby, otherwise she might have joined in. She certainly looked like she wanted to. H hey, it all worked out in the end, right? She managed. Weiss hung her head and fell silent for a long, horrible moment. Then she reared back, seized hold of Yang's face, and pinched her cheeks. Ouch. She cried. No fair. What the hell, Weiss cream. What did I do to deserve this? Don't you Weiss cream me, Yang Xiaolong. I have half a mind to. Alright kids, show's over. Time to go. Raven clapped her hand sharply, drawing a collective flinch from the girls. Come back tomorrow if you like. Or whatever. She flung up her hands when Yang tried to protest. I don't care. Just get. You're cramping my style. Out, out, out. Weiss craned her neck back. Where did Naruto go? None of your damned business, Shni. The bandit batted her ponytail like a cat with a bit of yarn. Now scoot. For a moment she considered challenging the bloody woman all over again, it was only Yang's hand on her shoulder that forestalled any conflict on that front. She expected another outburst. A retort at the very least. All she received was a silent shake of the head. Just leave it. She's not worth the trouble. If you say so. Naruto emerged from the shadows as the last of Team RWBY slunk away. Raven sidled up to him with a sigh. You've gotten soft. Somehow, he wasn't sure if that was an insult or a compliment. Have I? He shrugged. You were antagonizing those girls. Did you enjoy baiting them? A little. They're easy to rile up and they remind me of their mothers. She confessed. And you have gotten soft. Her lips parted in a sigh as she leaned against him. Just a decade ago, you would have flattened someone like her without a second thought. Five percent. Really? She jabbed his scarred chest with a finger, drawing an amused laugh from her partner. We both know you weren't using that much. Not really. You could have killed her with less. Think of it as a learning experience. He said. And she's your daughter. I didn't want to hurt her. Our daughter. H-R-R-M-P-H. In the end Naruto chose to ignore her remark and saunter back inside. Still, Roman Torchwick, eh? Didn't think we'd be related. Still don't believe it. Raven caught the hint and pounced on it. That Roman Torchwick. He's your son. Maybe. The blonde shrugged, heedless of her baffled look. I mean, now that I think about it, I can kinda see the resemblance there. Another shrug chased her fury away. Besides, it's not like I was celibate after you ran away all those years ago. Although her blazing red eyes continued to bore into him, he remained unfazed. I wandered the world before I came back and settled down. At a few one-night stands here and there, nothing serious. Trust me, I'm as surprised as you are. It's not like there's a horde of mini-me's running about remnant or anything. I'd know if there were. Although there was one redeed. She squirmed angrily. I still don't like it. What, that I might have other kids wandering around, or that I got some tail while you were away. Naruto prodded her with his good hand as he snatched up a broken black, but as he looked on, her pale cheeks slowly suffused themselves with, but the faintest shade of pink. No. You're not. A lone blonde brow quirked as a slow smile spread across his face. Don't tell me you're actually jealous over this. When she didn't answer his grin grew. Aha. You are. I didn't think you had it in you. Vines of heated embarrassment burned their way up Raven's neck. I'm the only one you need to look at. Naruto whooped and wrapped his arms around her. Even as she squawked and squirmed he buried his head into her neck. A-W-W-W. Let go of me you big oaf. Raven wriggled in his grasp to no avail, his arms locked around her like a cage, one she couldn't possibly escape. No cuddling. 
Off. I said off. Nope. Never letting go. You're stuck with me now. He planted a kiss against her collarbone that left her shivering. I'm not letting you get away this time. Another kiss had her squirming in an altogether more pleasant way, her eyes widening as his lips roved higher, brushing her neck, then her chin as he continued to speak. You'll have to kill me. That's an option. Then he pulled away, the bastard. Nope. Hope you're ready for the night shift. Raven made angry raven noises. Do you ever close this damn place? Naruto leaned back and shrugged. Around midnight usually, why? Does it matter? Fine. Be that way. She shook her head and grabbed a broom. You're a cruel man, Naruto Uzumaki. Ah, you know you love me. He chuckled softly and did the same. You'd never put up with me if you didn't care this much ack. Her elbow sank into his ribs. Jury's still out on that. Now help me with this wall. And stop making faces or you won't be getting a thing from me tonight. Dot zero. 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 The night shift as Naruto so eloquently put it sarcasm ahoy. Was anything but simple. Together and with a liberal application of shadow clones on Naruto's part, they somehow managed to repair the damage before the next rush came. Even then, the so-called clientele he attracted at this hour seemed to nothing short of shady. Ranging from crooks and thieves to wanted gangsters alike, they were a motley crew, all things considered. Ardent men and women who'd seen or done their share of time, and not one of them made trouble for him. Not a one. Some even called him boss. She got a good laugh out of that one. Perhaps that had something to do with her presence, no one questioned a woman with a sword, least of all when she wore her mask. Perhaps they thought her security of some sort. Raven was content to let them believe what they wished. Men and women alike deceived themselves all the time. Tonight would be no exception. And then she appeared. At first she wanted nothing more than to tell the newcomer off. Until she got a good look at her. She was a dark-haired beauty with long legs, clad in a little red number that was nothing just shy of sinful. Eyes of dark molten amber roved around the room, passed over her, and settled upon Naruto. A shiver shot down Raven's spine at the sight of her. This one was bad news. She just knew it. Didn't know how she knew, only that she did. Naruto didn't seem to care, and if he did, none of that concern showed as he sauntered up to meet her. Cinder. His voice boomed out in greeting. How have you been? He knew this little harlot, you'll be wanting the usual, I take it. Yes, please. She planted a kiss on his cheek, and Raven nearly slew her on the spot. I'll have a side of strawberry shortcake, if you don't mind. Not at ALL. The small sullen side of her balked at her own behavior, she was acting like some love-struck lass trying to keep a rival away from her. Just what was Naruto to her. Didn't matter. He was hers. She'd never say it aloud of course he'd never let her live it down. But the blonde buffoon meant something her. More than most. She'd already lost him once through no fault but her own, and she'd be damned if she lost him again. Acting like a jealous old hen accomplished nothing here, however. So she grit her teeth and watched. You're becoming something of a regular here. Cinder full preened as her favorite treat appeared before her. Am I? And that was fast. She hummed in appreciation. Keep this up and I might have to steal you. You can try, came Naruto's humming reply as he poured her a tall glass of milk, but I'm afraid I've already spoken for. Are you, now? A dark brow arched as she considered his worn hands and saw no ring there. That can change you'll find me very persuasive. Raven made a noise somewhere between a sigh and a snarl, unfortunately that drew the newcomer's attention down on her. Those keen amber orbs fell upon her and narrowed, unable to ascertain her identity through her mask. She was suddenly glad she'd chosen to wear it tonight she didn't much like the way this one was looking at her. As if she'd recognized her. That was impossible of course. She'd never laid eyes on this little minx until this very moment. She would have remembered a man stealer like this. Have we met? Her blade was about to meet her face. Did that count? She's new. Naruto intervened with another dish, distracting the criminal before she could probe further. Folks have been pressing me to hire some security. Is that so? Cinder all but purred the words. I could lend you Roman for an evening or two. He might appreciate some. Honest work for a change. Irk. The blonde made a choking sound that Raven mirrored. That's really not necessary. I appreciate the sentiment, though. It's no trouble at all. She fished her treat and rose from her seat. I'm afraid I must be on my way. Don't be a stranger. Perhaps she'd sensed Raven's killing intent. Perhaps she suspected something. Perhaps she was simply being a good guest and not overstaying here welcome. Who knew? Nevertheless, the moment she left, Raven locked the door behind her and shuttered the window alongside it. To his credit, Naruto offered a faint token of protest. Hey. We're closed. She growled. Fair enough. He sighed. You're angry, I take it. Raven smashed her mouth against his. Bedroom. Now. 
They guided her upstairs, and she forgot all thoughts of Cinderfall for what remained of the evening. Unfortunately, said evening. Didn't quite end as she'd been expecting. It came in the form of a rather unwanted guest. Dot zero. 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 She'd never committed a crime before. Yet here she was all the same. So hungry. Hunger had driven her to desperation and desperation. Well. Here she was. Eerie gazed down into the shop, and the broken glass on the floor condemned her. She hadn't meant to make that much noise. It wasn't her fault. Or so she told herself. It was either this or join up with the White Fang, and she wasn't so far gone as to risk her neck with those maniacs. Not yet. It was either that, or starve. She slipped inside, careful not to cut herself on the glass, cursing quietly as it crunched underfoot. No alarm. Surprising, given the look of this place. It looked new, but maybe the owner thought he wouldn't need it. No cameras either, none that she could see. That was his loss and her gain. Another pang of guilt tore at Deary, and she tried in vain to stomp it down. She wasn't committing a crime, she told herself. She was just taking a little bit of money to get by. Or food. Whichever came first. This was a bakery. He must have some food or something in the back, cash at the register at the very least. There better be. If she'd smashed that window for nothing. Her stomach growled again, a low and desperate sound that made her insides twist. She hadn't eaten in nearly a week. Even the gun in her belt was stolen, a dust pistol purloined from a drunken officer on duty. Vale was soft when it came to crime, but she didn't doubt for a moment that her actions would be reported. One crime atop another. There. Jackpot. She crept closer and considered the register for a moment. Locked. Of course it was locked. Her bad luck prevailed in all things, it seemed. It looked heavy too, too heavy for her to carry without hurting herself. Maybe if she had her aura unlocked she might have been willing to risk it, but. Whatcha doing there, kiddo? The hand clamped down on Deary's shoulder and she spun with a shriek. Hi, Yak. The owner of the bakery blinked back at her in orange-black pajamas, not at all phased by her cry. I'm afraid we're closed for the evening. He smiled back at her. But you're not here for cookies, are you? Deary leveled the pistol at him. He emptied the register. She forced the words through chattering teeth. And the safe. I know you've got one somewhere. Oh gods, she was shaking like a leaf. She'd never killed a man before, human or otherwise. She didn't want to start now. No, no, no. Not good. Super sketch. Much to her dismay, the blonde didn't bat an eyelash. Look, if it's food you want, I can get you a plate. Free of charge, his tone turned soothing when her stomach whimpered. Just put the gun down. Eerie didn't believe him. Humans were all the same. They lied and lied and lied again. Just like her old landlord, just like her boss, just like her ex. They took and took and took until you didn't have any more to take, then they'd turn her out on her ear. Well not this time. She wouldn't be fooled. Just give me the money. The blonde pursued his lips. You look like you've had a bad time. Now let's not do anything you regret. Because if you pull that trigger, I promise you, you're going to regret it. S.H. Shut up, old man. You don't know me. Oddly enough, that seemed to wound him more than any bullet. Why does everyone call me that? His shoulders slumped. I ain't that old. The gun clicked against his stomach. Hands up. I mean it. Naruto smiled down at her. It was all teeth. Deary, was it? You know how to use that. Why yes. Of course I do. How did he know her name? No. She couldn't falter. Not now. Empty the register, old man. Nope. Much to the starving girl's annoyance, her mark continued to smile at her like a patient parent. I don't think so. My employees will be working hard for that money, and I need to pay them this week. What kind of boss would I be if I stiff them their first paycheck? Why you? Tell you what, squirt. A hand reached up and seized the pistol, gripping the barrel with enough force to make the metal buckle. For decency's sake, I'll give you one shot. Blue eyes widened with glee as she struggled to pull her weapon away. What's wrong? You said you were prepared for this. Take the shot. Make it count. You can't do it, can you? That's good, I suppose. It means you're not a hardened killer. Blue eyes drifted past her. Time's up. The bloody red blade settled against the thief's throat from behind. Dinner and a show. How sweet of you. Don't kill her, Raven. Naruto plucked the gun from her hand. I like her. She has potential. You and your strays. She shrugged. If you say so. Sorry kid, nothing personal. Beery raised her hands. Um. Mercy, lord. And then there was pain. Thanks for watching guys, hope you all enjoyed this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, also don't forget check link tree to show some love author of this fanfic. Take care.